Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Boy, we have got a derby-licious weekend coming up, don't we? Oh, talk talk derby to me, Matt. Yeah, we we have four graded stakes, Kentucky Derby preps, point races, whatever you want to call them, on the line today. I have a feeling one of the four might turn out to be more of a Preakness prep than a Kentucky Derby prep, Matt. It's Bob Baffert's race, this Robert Lewis. I think he's going for number 12. He's going for some crazy number six in a row maybe on Saturday. And I think he probably has the two horses to beat in Nisos and Coach Prime. We'll see how good Nisos is. But uh, the news came in that no owners moved their horses from Baffert, so no Kentucky Derby for these Baffert horses. Yeah. Yep. Heard it before. Getting a little tired of it. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's all true. The Robert Lewis looks like a Preakness prep. The Withers, I'm not sure if this is really a Kentucky Derby prep or more of a prep for a uh, minor stakes race in the summer, Matt. But the Withers uh, has a uh, light line, not flight line, but light line uh, facing El Grandio uh, going nine for alongs at Aqueduct on Saturday. Yeah, it certainly is not uh, is not a race loaded with uh, Kentucky Derby contenders that we've seen. There's only two horses in there that uh, have any Derby points, but it is a field of five, and uh, uh, it's an interesting race. I think uh, there's a chance for some upsets, some some big odds in that race. I think. Well, you said five. Is it is it nine? Field nine, of yes, I'm sorry, Brian. Nine, nine. nine. yes. Field yes. of nine in the Withers. Okay. Well, those the Preakness Prep, the Bob Lewis, and the Withers are, are not the two races we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the best Kentucky Derby Prep of the weekend, which is the Southwest Stakes. And we're going to talk about the Holy Bull, which, of course, features the return of the champion fierceness. Let's jump right in, Matt. We'll go to Oakland Park first for the Southwest. You ready? Yeah, Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's look at this field. It is a nice field of 12. I think it's a good betting race, Matt. Uh, number one, one of the reasons it might be a good betting race is I'm a little surprised who the morning line favorite is. Number one is Maycox Bay. He's three to one on the morning line. This go Dolphin homebred trained by Mike Stidham, son of Spatestown. Uh, I got to say, Matt, does he deserve to be the morning line favorite in here? A um, head scratcher for me, Brian, on that uh on that morning line favorite, because as opposed to uh, what I said about the withers, the Southwest is a race that that it's actually loaded with horses that have uh, uh, been on the Derby trail already. Six of them have, uh, have earned uh, Kentucky Derby points already. One of them uh, uh, wasn't eligible to win uh, Kentucky Derby points uh, when, when he ran, so it 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 is a very strong field in the twelve and and Maycock's Bay, yeah, favorite on the rail. I don't I don't love that uh, in this field. Uh, um, one a maiden special weight at Parks on a sloppy track, and then I guess the 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 favoritism is coming from a big uh, length win in an allowance to fairgrounds grounds that he won by almost 11 lengths. But that was only a field of six, Brian. Yeah, it was a field of six. He looked impressive. He won for fun. It was also getting Lasix in that race, uh, picking up Lasix in that a big allowance win. Can't run with Lasix here. So another reason maybe to think that Maycox Bay is very favorable, uh, very beatable as a morning line favorite, at least. I, I don't know that he'll go off as the favorite on Saturday. Number two is a maiden. Blinkers off for the son of Tapature. Charleston uh, looks like a hopeless horse in here to me, man. Yeah, still a maiden after five starts, Brian. Uh, got claimed for $75,000 two races back. Tough spot. Yeah. And number three, let's, let's take a look at those morning line odds again, Matt, because we question Maycox Bay as the favorite. I also find it interesting that Charleston and Magic Grant are both the same odds at 30 to 1 because I don't really think Charleston has much shot at all. Magic Grant, on the other hand, is a long shot that I would use, especially underneath in the exotics. He was a rallying winner in his second career start of the Clever Trevor in Oklahoma, 
And then last time he was rolling late to be third in the springboard mile. Yeah, absolutely agree with you, Brian. Uh, by the time I got done scratching my head with the three to one on uh, Baycox Bay, uh, uh, there comes along the the three horse Magic Grant, and I'm scratching my head again. Thirty to one uh, on that horse uh, after uh, showing well. I know you know the the those races uh, at Remington Park the, in the Clever Trevor and the Springboard Mile don't always translate well. But hey, come on, he's got three Derby points already. Uh, I don't know. Thirty to one seems way out of line. Yeah, yeah. A horse I want to use again in the exotics. He's a rallier and there is speed in here, Matt. The Springboard Mile did translate pretty well for uh, an old friend of ours, Senor Buscador, uh, with a very good second in the Pegasus last week. A uh, Springboard Mile winner from years back. Number four is the Springboard Mile winner, Matt. His name is Otto the Conqueror. Otto the Conqueror on paper looks like one of the ones to beat for trainer Steve Asmus and Joel Rosario in the saddle he's coming off that win last time at remington park yeah brian he's coming off three wins in a row uh actually got, having moved from a maiden special weight win to an allowance win at uh at churchill down that allowance race was noteworthy because uh, uh he was a winner over honor marie who is a horse that is been talked about a good bit from his races last year. Yeah, Honor Marie is a great stakes winner after that allowance race, and uh, we'll be coming back in the Risen Star in a couple weeks at Fairgrounds, which looks to be a loaded uh, edition of the Risen Star we can have to look forward to in a couple weeks. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt, because I think we see in this big field uh, a noteworthy thing there with that fast pace button lit up. There's a bunch of horses who have speed in here, uh, Otto the Conqueror being one of them. I don't know if he has enough speed to get to the lead in this field, but it looks like there is a contested, contentious early pace. And we like to look at that and think, well, maybe horses can pick up the pace. Uh, could make the job a little bit tougher for Otto the Conqueror for trainer Steve Asmussen. Number five is Winstock. You see him in the middle of the field there. He's got a little bit of speed. He comes from the barn of Bob Baffert, of course. And that's why Matt mentioned that one of the horses wasn't eligible for Kentucky Derby points. But Winstock is coming off a win in the grade two low South futurity. Yeah, absolutely. Another one of those races that Baffert has just dominated uh, in an overwhelming fashion uh, in in recent years. Was an open length winner of his maiden special weight at Santa Anita on top of that uh but yeah you can see on this pace projector that yeah, there are six horses clustered pretty close together out front yeah yeah it, it should be a fast pace Winstock could be closer than the middle of the pack but he might not want to be closer the son of solomini who's really moved forward out in southern california since running longer in his last two matt the number six is another horse we need to talk about his name is liberal arts liberal arts is a son of Arrogate. Uh, he uh, had a successful two-year-old season, lots of good performances in there, and uh, the last one being the best. It's been over three months since we've seen him, but uh, he, he caught an off track at uh, Churchill Downs, and he rallied nicely to win the street sense. Yep, a winner on the Derby Trail in the in the street sense. Before that was third in another Derby prep in the Iroquois, where he did not have the best uh, the best of trips. So he's got 13 Derby points already for uh, uh, I say young trainer, but but a really experienced new out on his own trainer in Robbie Medina, who for many 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 years was the top assistant to Shug McGahey in New York. Yeah, Medina has a pretty nice horse uh, early on in his own uh, stable now, finally. Uh, so that that's one to watch. Uh, Liberal Arts, uh, again, could be a benefactor if this pace is contested and fast. Liberal Arts is a horse who likes to rally. One horse who we don't think has any intention of rallying, Matt, is the number seven. His name is Carbone. Carbone is uh, the second uh, second of two from trainer Steve Asmussen, and Carbone has went right to the lead in both of his starts, won them easily, has done it on the front end, and now, as they say, gets an acid test in this deep field. 
Yep, maiden special weight win by eight lengths, allowance win uh, at Oaklawn Park by four lengths. I don't know, Brian, in my eyes, Carbone could be the speed of the speed. I agree with you, Matt. Carbone looks very fast. Uh, of course, his sire was a sprint champion, Matoli. Uh, they want to see how he can handle uh, going a little bit longer here in this mile in the 16th, $800,000 uh, Southwest stakes. Uh, but it looks like he might have found a tough race in that there is other speed. Even if he's the speed of the speed, he might uh, find uh, uh, that he has to go a little too fast to do it early. We'll see, but a horse with a lot of potential. The, the, the number eight horse might have some potential too, Matt. His name is Common Defense. He's a son of Karakintai, a Breeders' Cup mile winner on the turf. Uh, Common Defense, though, has turf and dirt in his breeding, and he's ma only made two starts. Uh, for trainer Kenny McPeak, the first of two for trainer Kenny McPeak. I like what I see from Common Defense. He's passing horses, got up for second in his uh, uh, debut performance, which was at Oaklawn Park. And then he came back uh, for another nice race over the track when he rallied to win uh, over a big field in a maiden special weight last time at Oaklawn Park. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Who knows? He could be any kind, but uh, this is a tough spot here in the field of 12. Tough spot, but another horse who might like a good pace might be able to uh, pick up some ground. Number nine is a maiden as well, just like the number two, Charleston. However, I think this maiden is with uh, not without hope here, Matt. He's run three decent races. He's faced some decent horses. Linebacker is his name, and he's the son of Bolt Doro for trader Jordan Blair. He's run in the money each time at Merrill, uh, Keeneland, Churchill Downs. And then last time at Oakland Park. Blinkers go on. Trainer hoping that that'll uh, make a bit make a difference. Yeah, I, I see a big difference between him and the two. I can't pick him out in this race, but uh, linebacker is a long shot possibility at least. Number ten, more speed, Matt, and, and maybe the horse who can most make life difficult for Carbone. If we're right, if Carbone is the speed of the speed, Mystic Dan might be the one that is most likely to uh, make his life miserable early. This is the second of two from Kenny McPeak, a son of golden sense. A lot of speed here, Matt. Yep, uh, he broke his maiden at Churchill Downs in his second try, and then went out to Oaklawn Park for the Smarty Jones, where he ended up in fifth place. Yeah, and it wasn't a bad fifth, and he was between horses, and I could see him uh, 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 bouncing back with a even better performance. But as we saw that U.S. Pay, uh, time form U.S. pace projector, it's just a tough spot for speed horses in here. Just Steele can pass horses, but he's another speed horse. Wayne Lucas likes to run his horses. Just Steele's already had eight races. Yep. You would know it by, by looking at that uh, at the lifetime record of uh, eight starts and a couple of wins to give you an idea that this was a Lucas runner, uh, won that Ed Brown stakes uh, at Churchill Downs and uh, was second in the Smarty Jones. Looks like a good, solid kind of horse uh, that, you know, could move forward, but could be a little tired at this point. We shall see. Yeah, his stakes win came sprinting, and in the Southwest, he was second. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Smarty Jones, he was second, but uh, uh, really had no answers uh, uh, late in that race uh, for the rallying winner. Number 12 is a horse we've talked about. He's been scratched out of a few races. Awesome road. There was some potential early, uh, ran into some tough fields in the Breeders' Futurity Kentucky Jockey Club, but really didn't do much. Not sure he's going to run in this one, but here he is again. Yeah, here he is again, and I think we're saying the same thing we said last time, uh, uh, that he's also entered in a stakes race on Friday at Turfway Park. Yeah, last time we said it, he was scratched out of both of those races, and now he's entered in both of these. Still a Brad Cox horse uh, out of the Alba, owned by the Alba family stable, who has some potential to to move forward, I guess. But uh, yeah, he's, he's a bit of an enigma right now with the scratches. All right, a good field in the Southwest. Let's uh, look at a different sort of field down in South Florida. Matt Gulfstream Park, of course, has a, uh, a premier uh, a lineup of Kentucky Derby preps that lead to the Florida Derby. The Holy Bowl is the first graded stakes race for three-year-old Colts down in Gulfstream Park, and it has attracted 
the freshly minted two-year-old champion, Fierceness. Last time we saw Fierceness mount, he looked like the real deal out at Santa Anita in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Sure did. Uh, 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 he came back from uh, that sloppy track uh, race at Champagne where he didn't uh, fare well. We remembered that his maiden special weight was so overwhelming and visually impressive, and he bounced back, and his win in the uh, uh, – in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile was also visually impressive, did everything that's asked of him. Uh, Todd Pletcher said that uh, uh, fierceness as opposed to Forte, you know, talking about the similarities between these two horses, Rapoli, Pletcher, uh, champion, winning the, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, uh, um so a lot of similarities, but Pletcher says this is a different kind of horse, a much easier going kind of horse. Uh, really did not have any time off since uh, the Breeders' Cup uh, juvenile in terms of his training. Training was was a little bit light after the race, but then came right back in it and has been uh, has been training great guns. Yeah, fierceness. Uh, let, let's compare Forte and fierceness a little bit, Matt. Of course, Forte uh, was the two-year-old champion two years ago, and he had a very nice three-year-old year, but he didn't quite get the big wins that they were hoping for. Um, Forte was a horse who kind of uh, ground horses down in the stretch and, and, and wanted to win. Fierceness looks like a different type of horse. I, you know, hyperbole as it may sound, fierceness is Breeders' Cup juvenile of last year was one of the more impressive two-year-old races of recent years that's how good he was out in santa anita i mean they ran nearly three seconds faster than the breeders cup juvenile phillies uh, he won off by more than six lengths over a, a, a solid field uh fierceness we probably say it too often can be any kind but fierceness truly can be any kind he, he's a champion already but he's only had two wins he's only had three starts on the downside uh, he's only had three starts, and one of them was a poor performance. Uh, he broke a little slow, was an off track in the champagne, but one out of his three starts was a poor performance. So you never know. But the other two performances are so good that uh, uh, the talent here, you, you just don't know how, how much talent he really has. And he's caught a field that doesn't look all that strong in the Holy Bowl. As you say, he's working well. Uh, Rapoli, Pletcher Velasquez, we've seen this Pletcher Velasquez team for decades now matt and fierceness simply towers over this holy bull field let's get to the rest though there's an undefeated horse on the rail matt beware the undefeated horse uh paco lopez is going to be riding uh the son of spacetown but uh, to tell you the truth i don't fear the undefeated horse in this race well not this undefeated horse uh we got another one to talk about that i think might be a little bit more interesting uh this horse for uh for veteran trainer Joe Orsino, two for two. Maiden win was in a was in a claiming race at Gulfstream Park. He's a Florida bred. He came back and won a Florida bred allowance race by eight lengths, but on the rail, tough field. Uh, um, yeah. You you hit it on the head. He's not the right undefeated horse to uh be talking much about in this field, Matt. Uh, the, the number two, Irad Ortiz, is uh, jumping on or staying on the number two, Matt. This is the son of Topature. Um, let me look at my notes here. Yeah, I saw, I'm sorry. And the son of Entice for Jane Sabelli. Uh, he, uh, he's had some nice-looking wins along the way, but uh, on the other hand, he couldn't get it done last time in the Mucho Macho Man, beating only a length and a half. Interesting that Irad stays up, but uh, I'm not sure what to think of the two. Yeah, uh, I certainly headed into the, the the mucho macho man looking like a horse that uh, uh, had a good shot in that race. Uh, uh, nice and uh, an open length winner of his maiden special weight uh, in his second try, then a win in an allowance at Gulfstream. But uh, yeah, fourth in that mucho macho man. The number three is Otello, and Otello is. The undefeated horse that we want to talk about more because Otello is extremely interesting. Uh, you know, I, I said earlier that fierceness towers over this field, Matt, but Otello is uh, a pretty nice looking son of Curlin for trainer Christophe Clement. Christophe Clement uh, has had some good dirt horses. He's known more, 
as a uh, turf trainer, but of course he trained tunnelist among others and, and Clement is just a top trainer. Uh, Otello came out, got up late with a surge of aqueduct and a maiden. And then in the Mucho Macho Man, a pretty similar performance where he surged late to, uh, to, to get up and win the Mucho Macho Man in only a second career start. Otello is an interesting horse. Interesting horse for sure, Brian. A uh, 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 good pedigree, a lot of promise, already showed us that uh, he can handle the distance. Absolutely. And the truck. So Otello coming off that Mucho Macho Man uh, a little while ago, uh, I guess that was about four weeks ago for the son of Curlin. So looks like the big, biggest threat for sure to number seven, Fierceness. I threw up the time form U.S. pace projector just now, Matt, and uh, uh, not a slow pace, not a fast pace. Um, there are some horses who uh, should be at least in the running. But interestingly, they have Fierceness uh, out on top who will be the heavy favorite. And then interestingly, the clear second choice, Otello, is at the back of the pack early. Yeah, uh, interesting in that certainly uh, uh, when we think about fierceness uh, being out front, you know, we don't think of him necessarily as, as a speedy, speedy front runner, but, you know, the, the, Vic, the overall speed of that Breeders' Cup juvenile race I think is what puts him on top in the pace projector. Yeah, th there's some other speed. We talked a couple about the, a couple of them already in the one and the two. We're also going to mention the eight as some speed, but they're not speed balls. Fierceness should be able to find a comfortable position on or near the lead from his outside post, and it looks like a good spot. But it looks like a bunched up field where the pace should be moderate, and Otello won't be too far out of it as again the uh, the obvious second choice in here matt let's get back to the others in the field number four dancing groom uh i i want to think that this son of vino rosso uh trained by antonio sano could bounce back a little bit he had a very nice win in his second start at saratoga three starts back but uh, much like awesome road uh, who we talked about a little bit in this uh, southwest eggs dancing groom just wasn't up to the uh, task third in the champagne, but it was by more than 10 lengths, and then uh, well beaten six last time in the Kentucky Jockey Club. Yep, blinkers go on. Uh, maybe Santa looking to, to turn things around with this horse. I was surprised to see the name Dancing Groom on this uh, uh, young horse. Dancing Groom. Uh, I, I see, I've seen a lot of dancings over the year, and I've seen a lot of grooms. Runaway Groom is the first horse that comes to mind but yeah i i just the sano does well at gulfstream park and dancing groom is a horse i think you, see, you mentioned the blinkers on i think still might be able to do more than he showed in those first two stakes races maybe a horse to think about in the exotics here another horse to think about the exotics certainly is number five no more time this is an iowa bread matt uh, i'm seeing some, some sons of not this time Brett in Iowa doing well. They like not this time the sire in Iowa. And no more time has showed some ability. Uh, he was beaten, though, last time in the Mucho Macho Man. I'm not sure, though. It, it, it says he was rank. I made a move on the outside. I, I don't think that was the best of him. Could move forward just a little bit here. Yeah, he looked really good winning his maiden special weight, uh, Brian, at Gulfstream Park by uh, almost seven lengths and headed into that Mucho Macho Man. Uh, that a number of the horses in this field uh, are coming out of. I, you, interestingly, you mentioned that Iowa bred. There, there are several horses in this field that are, are not your typical Kentucky breads. Uh, with the, we got a Florida bred, and I think they're, you know, it's an Indiana bred, and it's an interesting group. Yeah. Uh, don't forget the New Jersey bread, Matt. We haven't talked about them yet, but there's a Jersey bread in the field. Uh, number six is domestic product, and, and I see him being the third choice in here behind Fierceness and Otello. Domestic product, one of those uh, Klarovich, Chad Brown, you, you know by the name who owns him, who trains him. Uh, domestic product was a good-looking winner of his second career start, two starts back, the son of Practical Choke. But in his first race and then his last race, he really didn't do much. So the jury's still out on domestic product. Could move forward, though, off a poor run in a muddy edition of the Remsen. Yeah, blinkers come off, and and I don't think it would be a difficult thing to, to 
give this horse a pass from that muddy race in the Remsen. Yeah, the, the Remsen was a deeper field than this. Nine furlongs early in his career, muddy track, aqueduct. Yeah, we would expect at least some sort of improvement off the Remsen. Is it enough to threaten the top two? Remains to be seen, but uh, the connections are right. Domestic product in the field is probably the third choice. Fierceness, we already talked a lot about. Uh, there he is, Johnny V, three to five on our morning line. Probably will go off lower by the time they open the gates, Matt. I don't really think this is a good spot uh, for him to get beat. Yeah. Number eight is the New Jersey bread. Matt, you've been waiting for the Jersey bread. His name is Sea Streak. And actually, this son of Sea Wizard, he's had four starts and they're all good. They are go all good and certainly an interesting set of past performances for this Jersey bread. He, he debuted, Brian, in an open stakes race at Monmouth Park. The Smoke Glack, and oh, just saying the name Smoke Glack makes me happy. One of my favorite uh, horses of all time, but ran second in that uh, stakes race in his debut. Uh, he's got a nice allowance win um, at Gulfstream Park. It, he was another one in this field that ran in that Mucho Macho Man, had the lead um, and faded to third. So Maybe distance limitations, but uh, this one could be a pace influence for sure. Yeah, there's reasons why we like Sea Streak, Matt. Uh, the, the, he ran into Smoke Clocking. It's his first race of his life. I'll, I'll say that name again: Smoke Clocking. Oh, Brian, and stop! What a oh, what a nice horse. He won a lot of a lot of races back in the day, Matt. Uh, a Jersey bred. You don't see this Irish Sea Wizard a, a lot. Uh, Four solid races. He's coming off a very nice performance in the Mucho Macho Man. Probably this one's a little bit uh, too much for him. He's not even the best New Jersey bred three-year-old out there, Matt, with Bookham Dano uh, doing big things. Uh, Bookham Dano might be better at one turn, but uh, Sea Streak, a, a nice Jersey bred. But uh, this is fierceness, so I, I'm not on the Jersey bred this time around, Matt. That, uh, that pre preludes our... Uh, segment of the show we like to call top picks matt and we're going to do them for the two races we talked about you'll go first with the southwest i will go first with the southwest i am going to brian let the uh pace projector guide my handicapping with all that speed in there i had to look for a horse coming off the pace and again i'm scratching my head on that morning line brian because i don't know what to think about it but uh i'm going with liberal arts who is eight to one on the th this interesting morning line i don't think there's any way brian that this horse is going to be eight to one but you know I, I would be happy with something close to that six to one or or five to one uh yeah, this horse is a is a confirmed horse that can run off the pace, has run well uh, in stakes races already. Um, you know, I, I my only concern is that he's coming off of a layoff and and early in his career he needed a couple races to shine. But um, with the pace set up, I'm going with liberal arts. Yeah, for for me, it all comes down to whether liberal arts uh, will. Um, carry on his good form as a two-year-old, just over three months off. Sometimes you see rallyers at two-year-old don't come back, uh, especially early on in their three-year-old year. So that scares me just a little bit. As far as the odds, yeah, eight to one seems high for a graded stakes winner in his last race at Churchill Downs. There's a lot of horses to bet. So I think no matter who you pick here, you're going to get some decent odds. I'm going with an even bigger long shot. Uh, common defense, I think, will be double digits here coming out of a maiden race. But I like two two races at Oaklawn Park going two turns already. So he's uh, in good form over the track. Sure, he's got to step up in class. But I like those maiden races. I know those uh, 12 horse fields at Oaklawn Park are good. And he won nicely last time for trainer Kenny McPeak. I think he can be a good horse. And I think this might be a good spot. Just like Matt, though to a rally and pick up some pieces here if it's a uh, a tough early pace like we suspect in the southwest i don't know what uh, how much there is to say about our top picks in the holy ball matt neither of us uh, took a swing against fierceness 
Yeah, no way. I couldn't, Brian. Uh, um, his his uh, two victories were just too good. His speed figures in those two races, e even the uh, 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 even in his first race, which were significantly lower than his speed figures from the Breeders' Cup, both of those speed figures tower over any speed figure that any horse in this field has. I think Fiercest is just way too good. I do too. Todd Pletcher uh, has him working really well, and he should be ready to run. Gulf String Park should be a track he likes. Uh, there's not quality speed in here. Uh, I, I'm going to make a. No, I, I, let, let me let me say this exactly uh, what I'm going to do. I am not going to bet the Holy Bull because I don't want to bet uh, a one to five shot. If I were going to bet the Holy Bull, I'd be making a win bet for second place. I guess that would be a place bet. I'd be making a straight exactive. Fierceness first, Otello second. It's not going to pay anything, and that's why I'm not betting. But if I was going to bet, it would be just a straight exacta because I think Fierceness wins easily, and I think Otello is going to pick up the pieces for second, and that's it in the Holy Bowl. Now let's see a big upset and make us both look foolish, Matt. Anyway, that's our show. Four big Kentucky Derby preps. One of them may be a Preakness prep this week uh matt let me get a party shot from you my friend yeah busy busy weekend uh with the derby trap the derby preps i will be at aqueduct on saturday for the withers so if anybody's out there that's uh, uh gonna be there say hello not you're at aqueduct you know it's not flight line right it's light line yeah that's okay i i i, I love aqueduct there you go. You you do love the big A, and I hope you have fun out there. Uh, and I wish everyone a good weekend. Enjoy these preps. Uh, we'll see what three-year-olds are moving forward on the Kentucky Derby Trail. I also want to thank, of course, our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Timeform US for their great pace projectors they uh, let us use every week. And, of course, our friend Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Most of all, I want to thank you for watching every week. Uh, Go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. Turn on those notifications. Leave Matt and I a comment. We do appreciate it. We'll be back next week. I think we're talking Tampa Bay. Our one, uh, or once or twice a year, we talk about Tampa Bay Downs, Matt. And next week might be a week. Yep. Looking forward to it with you, partner. And we'll see you next week. Good luck, folks.